Today we're talking about air, something that I've heard is pretty key to our continued existence. That's right, we're talking about another huge respiratory threat, this one man-made. The Trump administration on Thursday weakened regulations on the release of mercury and other toxic metals from oil and coal fired power plants. And people are saying this administration isn't doing anything during the pandemic. Let me put it this way, you might want to hold on to those face masks for a bit longer. For those of you regular viewers, sighing with your head on your palm because, oh man, Steven's doing another green policy episode? Well, this environmental policy has nothing to do with global warming and everything to do with not dying. So climate change deniers and Al Gore himself should be able to see eye to eye on this one. Also, I could not find one video news source reporting this, so if you even think this story is a little important, why don't you just give this video a quick share. So what just happened? It's a bit more complicated than EPA Director Andrew Wheeler setting fire to a pile of tires on Pennsylvania Avenue. Instead, the Economic Protection Agency, uh, wait, I'm being told the E stands for environment, huh, could have fooled me just created a new method of calculating the costs and benefits of curbing mercury pollution that environmental lawyers say would fundamentally undermine the legal underpinnings of controls on mercury and many other pollutants. So what does any of that mean? Well, fortunately for me, the EPA just released a ton of documents, and I'm locked in my apartment for the foreseeable future. The whole thing just kind of worked. This whole debate comes down to money. Specifically, not wanting to impose an undue burden on polluters for health regulations that might not help very many people. If you think that's in any way an exaggeration, here's a completely in-context quote from the fact sheet of this policy. EPA's information demonstrated mercury and air toxics standard was projected to cost up to $9.6 billion annually. While the monetizable benefits delivered from mercury emissions reductions were valued at up to six million dollars annually. I'll take sociopathic government statements for 500, Alex. Now let me translate that into English for you. What the Environmental Protection Agency just said was, it's going to cost energy companies about 9.6 billion dollars a year to regulate mercury and other toxin emissions, and it will only generate 6 million dollars in monetizable benefits. Sure, those 6 million dollars in benefits would manifest in the form of curbing mercury's devastating neurological damage to children and preventing thousands of premature deaths annually among with other public health benefits. But did I forget to mention just how expensive those filters are? Now I want to take a step back and present the entire story, because there's more to be understood about the math behind these monetization calculations, and I really want to give the EPA the fairest shake I can. Luckily for me, there was a much longer and more boring memorandum explaining the math behind the numbers. The first obstacle facing the EPA's goal of rolling back this mercury program on the basis of it's too expensive for power plants was that there was a previous set of numbers from the past administration showing that it was less expensive and putting a much higher price tag on, well, people's health and safety and human life. So how do you resolve this discrepancy? Well, not gracefully. In his announcement on Thursday, Mr. Wheeler called the Obama administration's accounting of health benefits dishonest. Great. Oh man, that is rich. Almost as rich as your clients back when you were a coal lobbyist. I mean, come on, that's like putting Bernie Sanders as the CEO of Goldman Sachs. I'm sure you're a smart guy, but what were we expecting? So how is the Obama administration stacking the deck in support of human life? Well, driving down mercury emissions alone, the studies at the time found, would yield a $6 million annual benefit, a fraction of the cost of the controls. But by adding in co-benefits like projected gains in avoided heart disease, asthma attacks, and other health problems, the total benefit reached $80 billion over 5 years. 
Overall, the Obama administration estimated that the rule would prevent 4,700 heart attacks, 130,000 asthma attacks, and 11,000 premature deaths each year. This administration just held down that delete key on the second part. And boy do things get a lot cheaper when you stop thinking about the effects of your actions. It's like reducing the cost of shooting someone down to, gee, bullets have gotten really expensive recently. To quote the actual policy memorandum, and brace yourselves because this is the longest quote I've done on this show. EPA identified a number of unquantified mercury related benefits of mercury and air toxic standards in the 2011 regulatory impact analysis. There are neurological, cardiovascular, genotoxic, and immunotoxic effects potentially associated with exposure to mercury, including impacts on motor skills and attention and behavior for which it was not possible to quantify the estimated monetized values of the mercury and air toxic standards rule. There's also the potential for mercury released from United States electric generating units to impact commercially consumed fish more broadly as part of a global pool. However, technical challenges in modeling these health impacts prevents them from being incorporated into the benefits analysis at this time. Additionally, deposition of mercury to water bodies can also have an impact on ecosystems and wildlife. Gee, getting dangerously close to the environment, you know, a third of your agency's name. However, more research is required to link these ecological effects to ecosystem services and estimate an economic value of mercury reductions. I mean, at this point, I kinda have to ask. What benefits did you include? I feel like that's everything. Where's this six million dollar amount coming from? Well, we can't set the benefit to zero. That would just look suspicious. In short, the government just put in a policy that's going to kill thousands of people each year to save energy companies money because they literally don't put the same value on human lives as previous administrations. I mean, that's literally what just happened. I generally don't put on my advocacy hat in these episodes, but damn, this could be the most egregious thing I have ever covered on this show. Congratulations if you're a power utility company though. The Energy Protection Agency has your back. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, first I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Remember to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching. Hey Facebook viewers, if you want to support independent, nonpartisan comedy news, why don't you come over and join our That's All I Have to Say About That Facebook group. And don't forget to share so everyone can learn.